Hey guys, welcome back to STM32 Coding for Everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up a precise one second timer delay using the STM32 hardware timer. So to do that, let's head over onto the STM32 Cube IDE. I've got the project already created, STM32 timer delay. Now, if you are not too familiar on how to set up and create a new project, please watch my tutorial on installing and creating a blank new project with STM32 Cube IDE. Great. Now, once you are here, the first thing we're going to do is to basically just clear the pin out as always so we can start afresh. Clear pins out. Yes. Great. Once everything is cleared, then we're going to head over to the system core here. Now in the system call, click on RCC. Now the RCC reset clock control, we basically going to set up the internal clock that's going to be running this microcontroller here. That is the big guy here. Great. So on a high speed clock, I'm going to click on bypass clock source. And on the low speed clock here, I'm going to select the ceramic, uh, crystal ceramic resonator. Great. Now you can see my crystal, external crystal oscillator settings have already been done. Then the next thing is we're going to head over to the timers. Now there is a couple of timers here for us to choose. Now we're going to choose timer three. Once you click on timer three, you're going to see these settings are going to pop up and just choose the internal clock source for the clock source. Once that's have been selected, then these other settings are going to pop up here. Now, these are the most important settings that we're going to do here to get this precise one second delay using the hardware timer. Great. Now, you can see we've got a press color here and this press color is basically uh, going to accept a 16 bit value. That basically two to the power 16. That's 65,500 something decimal. Great. And we're going to have to set up the counter period and the auto reload preload value great now before we do that let's first check the clock frequency that this chirp is running so head over to the clock configuration now i've got a tutorial where i basically explain the basics uh, blocks of these clock configurations it's not too difficult to understand so once you check the first thing you're going to notice my chirp here this nuclear board is running on a 64 megahertz but hold on, that is not the maximum frequency. The maximum frequency is 72 megahertz for my particular board. But the STM32 Cube IDE already set me up with a 64 uh, megahertz. So that is 64 million cycle per second that's going to be executed. So our goal here is to basically increment a one second delay every time the instruction cycle overflow to 64,000 million cycle. Great. So that's what we're going to achieve here. Now, if you look on to the right here, you basically you got the various frequencies for your peripheral buses. Okay. So this is very important. Now you see APB1, APB1 timer clock. So you got two different frequencies. There's a 32 and a 64, but on the APB2, all of them, they basically are sitting at uh, 64 megahertz. We know that they can run at 72, but it's important to know exactly the particular peripheral bus you're going to use, what the frequency that basically going to be uh, running that bus. Now, why do we need to know what is the peripheral bus frequency where your uh, hardware interface will be running on? So if you are setting up maybe a CAN bus system, an ADC or a PWM, you need to know exactly the bus frequency for your PWM. It's very important. Otherwise, if you're going to connect an external device, then you're going to have some synchronization issue. So our aim here is to basically know uh, the timer tree here, the frequency in which that bus is running where timer tree is connected. So we can see the 32 and 64, but we are not too sure. So to do that, I'm going to open the data sheet for this microcontroller and we're going to check on the data sheet, uh, basically on the block diagram. And that is on page 13. So I'm going to go ahead on page 13. And once you are on page 13 here, you already can see that APB2, it's a maximum frequency 72. Yes, we saw that it is 72. Then APB1, we've got a 36 here, but the board gave us a 32 
and 64. So we can see that timer 3 is connected on this bus here that's running at 36 and 64 for that meter. And timer 2 as well is on the same bus. Then we've got the all sort of timers here, 15 uh, to 17 and timer 1. They are on the 72 megahertz, so on the high bus uh, system there. Then you've got your USART and ADC, the dark and everything. So now we've got that information, we can safely say that this timer of us, timer 3, can run on a 64 megahertz frequency, just as the clock configuration here is telling us. So we can then safely go ahead and do our configuration. So now that we know that the frequency is 64 million cycles, so we need to divide that 64 million by a thousand so that we can set up a a, a prescaler because if we enter that value here obviously it's not going to work so because this is a 16 bits value so we divide it by 1000 so 64 million divided by 1000 it's going to give us 64,000 now we got 64,000 now we know that when the clock is going to count 64,000 cycle as per our division it's going to increment one millisecond, okay? Because we divided it by 1,000. So it's going to increment one millisecond. Now, if we need to get one second, then we need a 1,000 millisecond. Then our counter period must overflow after 1,000 millisecond. That's going to be one millisecond. That's exactly what we need to do here. Then on the auto reload, we're going to enable it. Great. Then the next uh, interesting part here is to basically update the event. Okay, so this is basically everything we need to do here. And let's not forget the timer tree global interrupt. We need to enable that so that it basically going to call back a function once the overflow have been reached. Now we're just not going to generate the code. We need some indicator, right? Because we need something that's going to show us that there is a delay that is happening every second so to do that i'm going to enable an led here uh on gpio a great so i'm going to use an external led on this board here if you do not have this board like me you can use the board uh the onboard led so that is on pa5 okay so i'm going to select pa7 and set it as an output like that and i'm going to give it some name label here so i'm gonna say led uh basically led one and then i will hit enter so right now i'm basically ready to generate this code so let's me go ahead and click on generate and yes great so the code is going to take a couple of minutes to generate now once the code generation is completed you can go ahead and examine your main.c file you can see that we got htim3 that's the variable for timer tree that have been defined there and we've got the static void function here for the initialization of the timers and the gpio uh, functions great so onto your main uh, function here you can see we've got the function that we are calling for the initialization and then the while loop that we're not going to put any code in there for now great so on the uh, void mx timer tree initialization you can see all the values that we set up are all here so you can also change them here if you want to great so now the first thing we need to do here is obviously we need to start the timer because if we just run it without starting the timer it's not going to work so we're going to look for the function that we need to start the timer over here on the drivers Okay, so I'm going to open this big file here. Okay, so it's going to ask me for some questions and I'm just going to say yes and apply. Okay, once the file open, go ahead and hit control F. And in the box here, I'm going to paste the name of the function we're looking for. That's HAL time base start IT. So I'm going to hit on find. Okay, and we need to find that function. So let's go. Great, so here is a function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically copy this function like this. Okay, I'm going to copy it and close here 
and head over back to the main that C and right under the initialization here, this is where I'm going to paste it. Now this function is expecting a pointer variable of the timer tree definition there. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the variable that was defined here for us based on the code generation. So I'm gonna copy it, okay? And I'm going to paste it right in there. Okay, then we need to reference it, okay, with the end percent. And don't forget to put your semicolon, otherwise things are not going to work. Great, so now uh, we can basically compile this code, but we're not going to see anything. So if we want to see something, obviously we need our callback function. So right under the main uh, function here, okay, we need the callback function. So I'm going to copy this. Uh, just make a duplicate somewhere here. You can write whatever you want to write here. I'm going to say call callback. Okay, so this is our callback function. Now the callback function is also located into the same file. So go ahead and hit control F and paste these following period elapsed callback. So there is a lot of callback function in this file, but we are precisely looking for the one that the period elapsed because we want to set up that flag. Okay, so I'm going to hit on find. That is the weak void HAL timer period uh, elapsed callback. So I'm going to close and I'm going to copy. Let me just take the whole function, okay? So we're gonna take the whole function, copy, and we're going to paste it right here, okay? Then we're going to remove the weak key here. I've already explained the reason why we remove it on my other tutorial. Great, so now, what we need to do here is to basically paste the code that we want to run here. So now, because we want to show a precise uh, delay of one second when the counter is going to be overflowing every one second. So this is a flag. So you can write any code you want to do. You can be working on any type of project and you want something to happen every time the counter overflow. This is where you're going to put your code. So I'm going to call the toggle function h a l underscore g p i o and i'm going to choose the g p i o toggle pin all i need to do here is to pass the variable for my port where the led is attached so i'm going to open uh the include here man and see where that definition was exactly set okay so i've got led one a uh, pin that's g p i o pin seven so I'm going to copy this, okay? And head back over. If you remember it by head, so you can go ahead and type it in. And I'm going to go back there and take the LED1 GPIO port. And this is also going to be copy and paste here. Then you must pass your semicolon. Now let's see. Okay, now it seems like everything is as it should be. So I'm going to go ahead and build this and cross our fingers. Oh, hopefully everything is going to work as intended. Great, congratulations. No errors, no warning. So everything is working as intended. Now, before we can load this, if you find this tutorial useful, please don't forget to hit a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That will be highly appreciated. Thank you so very much for that. And before this tutorial end, I'm going to show a quick bonus where you can monitor your timer overflow variable without having an LED blinking. Okay, now let's first uh, load it in and see how this program is going to work. Click on run. Make sure the project name that you want to load in is the correct one and say okay. And this is going to basically call the debugger as always and you can see that it is indeed running okay and everything is off on this side here then we should be getting our precise one second delay now this is a precise one second delay as per this clock frequency now when i hit on the reset here obviously it stops right because the clock is not running anymore okay then when i release and it is running again. This is better than the type of delay that we wrote in our previous tutorial where we needed to go into some loop and pass a big variable so that we can delay the process. Now, this is better. This is actually an interrupt delay. Great. Now, before we end this tutorial, 
if you want to monitor this counter variable, the, the easiest way to do is to basically just create a variable here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a 32 bit uh, variable that is u int 32 underscore t and give it a name. So we're going to say counter overflow. And we're going to initialize this to be equal to zero. Then I'm going to go ahead and copy this variable. Okay. So just go ahead and copy this variable and come on to your callback function. Just right under here, you can paste it and increment this variable. Now, what we're going to do here, we're going to run in debug mode. So let's go ahead and run it in debug mode. And this is supposed to build it first so that it can take account of our changes. Okay, so it's been built, it's successful, there is no problem, then we're going to enter debug mode. Now, once we enter debug mode, we're going to say switch. Great, now we are in debug mode. I'm going to go ahead and go on the live expression here, and we need to enter an expression. So let's go ahead and paste the counter overflow variable. We can see that the value is still zero, and I'm going to hit on resume. Right now, as soon as you can see the counter is uh, overflowing every second, you can see the value is also changing every second. Now, if you go ahead and stop this uh, variable, okay, and you want uh, the counter to overflow right uh, much faster than one second, so you're going to come here and change this. Okay, so let's say you want every 200 milliseconds you want to execute. So let's go ahead and run that also in debug mode. And we enter debug mode. We can see our counter overflow live variable is still there. We need to hit run. And you can see this value is now uh, incrementing much faster. And our LED is also blinking faster. So congratulations. You've successfully implemented a precise timer delay using the hardware timer of STM32. Thank you so much for watching. If you find it useful, please make sure you subscribe to SimTech channel for more tutorials like this. Until next time, cheers.